When we're trying to find the equilibrium conditions between phases in a binary system, it's important that we keep track of our reference states. This is really just doing some bookkeeping so that the curves for delta G mix as a function of composition are consistent and that we can find the appropriate equilibrium state. This is dealt with in detail in the text by De Hoff in chapter 10.1.1 and in the text by Gaskell in chapter 10.5 if you want to read more about this. Uh, but essentially what we have to do is that for component 1, actually for every component, but for, for any given component, we have to make sure that when we're looking at the value of delta G mix for the liquid state and delta G mix whoops, delta G mix for the solid state that we're letting the reference state of component 1 be the same phase here and here, right? Because remember as we're calculating delta G mix this is G of the solution minus G of the components at the reference state. And so we have to sort of keep the same reference state. Didn't mean to erase that. We have to keep the same reference state for both the solid and for the liquid. Okay. Then for component two, we get to make another choice. Component two, can be, have its own set of reference state, its own reference state rather, for the liquid and the solid. So before we visit the equation that we had, or the regular solution model rather, and one thing that was implied there that we didn't ever really explicitly say is that this was for one particular phase, so I'm going to say this is for the alpha phase, and we just assumed that the reference state for component 1 was the alpha phase and that the reference state for component 2 was the alpha phase. So that's what this notation means. This is the reference state for component 1, and this is the reference state for component 2, and we assumed that for delta G mixing in the liquid that the reference state for component 1 was the liquid and for component 2 was the liquid, right? So we can write out an expression here where this is equal to the mole fraction of component 1 in the alpha phase times delta mu 1 in the alpha phase plus basically the same thing for component 2. And this expression comes from the idea that this is a mixing property and this is a partial molar property. So it's this compositionally weighted sum of the partial molar properties. That's where that equation comes from. And we can write a similar expression in the liquid phase. So I should point out these uh, are not currently compatible, right? Because component one is not in the same reference state and component two is not in the same reference state. So I can't be using these two equations as written at the same time. Now we can uh, expand this a little bit and I'm going to expand this term here and this term here when I rewrite this equation. So we can say this is equal to composition of component 1 in the alpha phase and I'm just writing out this delta right so this is the partial molar Gibbs free energy of component 1 in the alpha phase minus the partial molar Gibbs free energy of component 1 in the reference state and in the alpha phase or in the pure uh, pure component 1 right plus x2 alpha 
with a similar expression. So this is really just expanding this delta mu sort of by definition. Okay. So this stuff here, that red underline became this red underline. Okay. We can do the same thing for the liquid phase. So this is x1 in the liquid. Okay, so that's what we have. Now, if we want to actually compare the delta G mixing of the alpha phase and the liquid phase, we need to do before what I said and make sure that we're picking the same reference state for component one in each phase and for component two in each phase. So we can make any choice of phase that we want. So we could choose if we just have uh, two phases possible. We could choose alpha alpha, we could choose liquid liquid, we could choose alpha and liquid, or we could choose liquid and alpha. And as you change temperatures, you can change your choice, right? So at temperatures where they both would be in the liquid phase, we could choose this. At temperatures where they both would be in the solid phase, we can choose this, and at other temperatures we can choose these. But for any particular temperature, you have to stick with your choice in both of these equations. So an example of this in action, and let's choose as our reference state alpha for component one and liquid for component two. So this might be at a temperature where we're above the melting point of component two but below the melting point of component one. Okay, so now we can write delta G mixing for the alpha phase. So this is the solid and we're choosing alpha and liquid as our reference states. And so we have the compositionally weighted term here. And so we have G1 alpha and we are comparing this to the reference state which is alpha plus x2 in the alpha phase because this is we're looking at the alpha phase okay so we're looking at the alpha phase so we need x1 in the alpha phase we need x2 in the alpha phase we're looking at this solution in the alpha phase okay but what goes in parentheses here is partial molar G of component two in the alpha phase because again, that's what we're looking at, right? But the reference state that we're comparing to for component two is the liquid phase because that is what we set here to be the reference. And we can, we can either uh, on these reference state terms. We can keep the bar here if we want, although in the pure, for the pure component, the partial molar G is the same as the molar G. So sometimes we won't put the bar over this. Okay, so we can do the same thing for the liquid now. So we have delta G mix for the liquid phase, and we have to keep the same set of reference states here. So now we have the X1 in the liquid phase is the partial molar G of component one in the liquid phase, because that's the phase we're in, but we are going to compare this to the partial molar G of the alpha phase, right? Because that is the chosen reference state. And then plus X2 in the liquid and compare it to its chosen reference state, which matches. Let me just color these other variables here so that you can see where all of these superscripts are coming from. And here we have the, I'm 
is for liquid. So this is for sort of the current phase. If you compare this with what we had on the previous slide, the difference now is that these reference state terms reflect the actual reference state. And so if you were to compare these with the equations on the previous slide, it's only the reference state terms that are different. We can also note now that in the delta G mix alpha equation and delta G mix liquid equation, that the reference terms are the same for alpha. So let me, or for component one rather, let me just sort of mark this. Right, so these two terms that I've circled in purple match one another. And for component two, these two terms that I'm circling in orange match one another. And that was not the case before. So now this is good because we have, we can actually compare the energy of the alpha phase to the liquid phase by using the same starting point and seeing which has the lower energy. So to do the next step, we need to do a little bit of arithmetic. And I'm going to write this on the next slide. But essentially what I'm going to do is that whenever the reference phase doesn't match the actual phase, so here would be a case of that, I'm going to add and subtract the same term in here. Okay, Down here, the reference phase matches the actual phase, but here it does not. And I'm going to add and subtract the same term inside of here. So that does for us. So for now, we have delta G mix alpha phase. And our reference states are alpha and liquid. And so we have the same first term, because there our reference state matched. And now I'm not going to put the bar over this, because this is for the compare, pure component. So the, the bar is equal to the no bar. So I'm going to just make it a little easier by not putting that. And then I'm going to add my second term. So x2 in the alpha phase. And what I had before was g2 in the alpha phase. And I'm going to leave myself some space here where I'm going to uh, subtract and then add the same term. So it's not going to change anything. And then I had g2 here in the liquid. right? Now what I'm going to add and subtract is the molar Gibbs free energy of component two in the pure alpha phase. And I'm just going to subtract and then add this. So this doesn't change overall uh, what is happening. So if we take a look at this equation, this term here and this term here, so this stuff plus this stuff, is what we had before for the regular solution model when we had taken both to be in the alpha phase, okay? Which leaves us with the second term, right? So the other part that's missing here is plus x2 times alpha. And now we have g2 naught alpha minus g2 naught liquid. So this is the molar Gibbs free energy of component 2 in the alpha phase minus the molar Gibbs free energy of component 2 in the liquid phase, right? So this is uh, really just the same as, so this part here, this is delta G for component 2 going from liquid to alpha. So this is the Gibbs free energy change of melting for component 2. Okay, and we have seen what that looks like before, right, where we have this kind of a plot of G versus T, and this one's, um, that one's not for the solid. This one's for the liquid. This one is for the solid, right? So this is this difference right here. If we, for the liquid, where we add in and subtract, um, the same term, 
we then can simplify both of these to the following. So delta G mixed for the alpha, where the reference state is alpha plus liquid. So this is just what we were working on on the previous slide. This is delta G mix alpha, so that sort of the regular solution model as we know it, plus this term x2 alpha delta G mix associated with melting this. All right? So component two's reference state is liquid, but we want it in the alpha, and so we need to do this melting transformation. Now we can write delta G mix for the liquid, keeping our same reference states, and we end up with sort of the regular solution model for the liquid plus x1 in the liquid times delta G for component 1 in the pure state going from alpha to liquid. And we can see these reference state differences show up if we look at a plot of delta G mix where the reference states have been carefully accounted for. So we can revisit this plot. So you'll see for component 1 that alpha is the reference state here. This curve comes to 0. And when we are looking at the liquid that we have to add on this amount here, which corresponds to this, and for beta that the reference state is liquid, right, that goes to there, and that what we have to add on is this amount to get from the liquid to the alpha, so the solidification piece. So at the end point over here, x2 is equal to 1, so this is 1. So we have this full amount, and then we're essentially sort of scaling this down, right, across. So this x2 times this gives us this red line that gets scaled down, and this other one gives us this green line, which gets scaled down. So this is how and sort of why we need to be careful with our reference states and, and how we do it, because obviously if this was shifted down, then our common tangent construction wouldn't accurately represent the distribution of phases and the equilibrium composition of these phases.